Today's show is sponsored by Supreme Whiskey Stones, an LEO business specializing in the best whiskey accessories to protect and serve your favorite pours. From whiskey stones to customer laser etched glassware, they take pride in what they do and love making their customers happy. Check them out on Instagram at Supreme Whiskey Stones, at SupremeWhiskeyStones.com, or through the various military and first responder organizations they sponsor. Cheers. Okay, this wasn't what I was going at with yeah. tell us a story. You really swung and a miss on this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, I woke up, ate cereal. You know, like, you, you have stories. Oh, that... I'll get one in the back. You can just cut all this out. My name is John Edwards. With me, as always, is the Baker, and together we make the Dabs Drinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. Say hello to the folks, mustache. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello to you. (laughs) How's it going? Tell me a story. (laughs) It's going that well. You think I'm not? I'm leaving that in there. Oh, well. Can't win them all. More mouth than in. Do you, do you want me to take it out? More room out than in. More room out than in. That's what Grandmother Baker always said. She was a, a jolly old woman, as I'm sure you can imagine. I should mention, and a huge, huge thank you to our friend Chris Chamberlain, who writes a bunch of food and drink stuff here in Nashville. And he uh, he actually put us on one of his top podcasts in Nashville, so we just want to give him a shout out. Make sure you read his stuff. I know he's in the Nashville scene. He's in a bunch of other places, and dude, super talented. I don't know why he likes us, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I uh, I got a good chuckle from that as well. Uh, thanks from me as well. When I used to have time to be a food connoisseur and eat out at nice restaurants regularly, I uh, I followed his food writings in the Nashville scene. These days, unfortunately, I don't think it's really applicable for. Frozen meals, Uber Eats, etc. You do do a lot of uh, Uber Eats. Oh yeah. I mean, they, they by no means do they sponsor us, but Zeke should find a way to get them to. Man, it is what it is. Two kids. As long as everybody's eating something, I'm I'm happy. But you can get some nice restaurants on there. Can't can't you get some of the stuff Chris covers on there? Probably, honestly. But it, I mean, it depends. It all's their um, you know their load. Once a restaurant gets too heavy or too much business in house. They just turn the switch off and you can't place orders. So, Well, and the same problem is those really nice restaurants always have the $9 fee opposed to like the three ninety nine fee. Well, even stuff, you know, like pizza, like DeSano's used to be on there, but now, I mean. Or it pops up at time, like they'll shut it off and then it pops up and it's only yeah. on for like a half an hour. And if you get it, great. If not. Yeah. So well, we, we stick to things that are local for the most part now. And I just pick up on the way home a fair amount too. So today we are tasting Stranahan Snowflake. A huge shout out to our buddy Nate from 5280 Whiskey. He's one of those guys that we love talking to. This is the second year we've had it. He's been nice enough to wait out in the cold and get us an extra bottle. So we are super, super appreciative of him. And he's one of those guys that we can't wait to share pours with. Hopefully it happens sooner rather than later. I know there's a bunch of people we talk to that we feel that way about, but if Nate ever makes it out here or if we ever make it out to Denver, it's going to be a hell of a time. Or even better, if we find a uh, a common time when we can all go to Kentucky and maybe leave with a barrel or three, that's uh, that's the ideal situation. That would be nice. It won't be at Four Roses anymore, but it would <laughs> be really nice. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Nate, many thanks, man. We uh, We appreciate this stuff for sure. This is always a special bottle. There's only 2,100 that come out every year. This year's is actually named Mount Albert. So each batch of the snowflake is named after one of Colorado's uh, 14ers. There's 58 14ers in Colorado. Mount Albert is actually the tallest of all 58. So there you go. This is a pretty special bottle. The fact, I mean, people wait. It's a hundred bucks, but people will actually wait in the snow and the cold overnight to go get this. It was aged in Syrah and Muscat cask from Ballastery, a port cask, a California Merlot, an old vine cask from Sparrow, a chocolate stout cask finish, 
two Madeira casks, and a rum cask. Is that enough for you? Hey, I mean, I don't know what else you could you could possibly need to uh, to have the kitchen sink. Although I am disappointed, I didn't hear tequila mentioned. That was in last year's. That reviews somewhere in our archives. You're welcome to listen to it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and thought that the the tequila aspect of that one last year was such a curveball, but that uniqueness. I mean, if you like tequila in any way. And if you even maybe don't like Stranahan's, but you like whiskey, that will throw you for a little bit of a mind loop. Ryan Lay was actually on that show with us, which is probably why it didn't get as many listens as we thought it would. <laughs> but <laughs> he was here. We we love when Ryan does shows with us, actually. It's his birthday. We're recording today, but it, it's his birthday. Oh, yeah. When this comes out, it won't be his birthday, but happy birthday, Ryan. We hope you have a great day. Cheers. <laughs> Less is more, Wally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this Stranahan's comes in at 100 bucks. It's 94 proof, 47% ABV, and it's aged for four years. We know that there's 2,100 of these. It's a mixture of whiskey that was aged and all those different casks. So there's a lot going on here. This is one of the most complex whiskeys, I think... I've ever had. You know, there's just a lot going on with all these finishes. Well, I just don't even know. How, I mean, where do you start when you build something like this? You know, I mean. With the first step. But no, I mean, there's so much in there. And, you know, you assume they've also got other finishes or finished barrels sitting around that they tinker with, play with. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to look at and wrap your head around. I'd love to chat with them sometime. And, you know, like any other blend, you've got to have a foundation in mind that you start with and you build from there. But you know, where do you really, where do you go in assembling or assimilating something like this? And then the varied percents, et cetera, to me, even how do you determine this is my finished product? Like when do you reach the point of I'm tired of working with this thing? Yeah. You, you know, you got middle of the night. Well, what if I did a little more of this or that, or I threw in a little of this one. I mean, there's just so many endless opportunities. I would have probably a problem of knowing it's so complex. It's like, when do you say it's done? Yeah. When do you sit there and go like, this is it, it's done? Or do you have, as you're saying, and not to reiterate, but you know, you have that hot flash in the middle of the night where you get up and you're like, I got to go do one more thing. So, <laughs> you know, like, what if I do this? And you know there's probably, you know, Rob, the master distiller over there, probably does a lot of that. He probably sits there and tinkers a little bit here a little bit there and then he has things like what if i do this what if i do that but thankfully you know he always puts out a good pour and he has a great way of just saying like all right this is it well you know that colorado culture they're a little more laid back than us it could just be like "Eh, you know throw some stuff in there if i like it i like it and i walk away and next year is gonna be man (laughs) he did an hour i did that in a month and i'm gonna get to do it again next year so (laughs) if i mess up like (laughs) Uh, that would uh, be pretty funny. Hey, man, here's your whiskey, man. <laughs> I'm sure Rob is not like nah. that. But picture just a bunch of South Park kids working. And Anyway, on to the juice, on to the next one. Zeke, you have the honors. Age before beauty. I'm going first again here. Do you want me to go first? Go for it. Okay. I'll, so, I'll, I want a couple of more pours before I get into this couple more pours or a couple more sips. Uh, you know, pours in the mouth. <laughs> Come on. So the nose on this, I got a bunch of dark fruit, cherry, maybe some molasses, some black sweet licorice, some, some of that. Not necessarily a black Twizzler, but like the real licorice, the, like, a, a, like the black vines and the red vines that you used to have. The... Taste was a rush of dark fruits, black licorice again. Definitely goes down easy, but I can't emphasize enough all the fruit that you get. And it's dark, and I think it's that chocolate stout and the malt that kind of leads to that dark fruit, licorice, chocolate taste that I have in there. The finish, it was... Interesting because that that wine really came out for me in the finish and a little bit of dryness, not in an off-putting way, but just the typical like, oh, okay, there's the wine. Like I knew the fruit was there. Zeke's trying to mess me up by drinking with a pinky up, but 
we know that Zeke is nothing but refined and civilized. The finish, I got those tannins, oak, a little bit dry wine, a little bit of chocolate. The fruit just is all over this. I got a bunch of fruit that just lingers. I could sit here and try to describe every single fruit I get. It's not worth it. It's just very fruity, but a dark fruit with some chocolate in there, and it was super good. Nice. And before I dive in, you know, having a sip just now, it's funny the the Jekyll and Hyde of it, in that, yes, you can tell it's Stranahan's. If we had Yellow Label right here with it, there's such a strong resemblance. But at the same time, there's so much else going on. You know, it's <clears throat> you can jump in and, and look at the complexity of it and, you know, work it around and, and try and take notes. Or if you just want to sip and enjoy, throw it back and half, like half people probably say, yeah, Stranahan's, right? You know, it's, it's to me, that's it's a unique property. Nose-wise, malted barley um, that I found typical with Stranahan's in general, but it seemed to have um, a crushed velvet to it. If That's not really a nose note, but that was what I thought of. You know, you're sitting in a lounge with the crushed velvet walls and the, that kind of whole vibe. It just kind of encompassed what you got from normal strands. I'm not as classy as you. I, I, I don't go to crushed velvet. Walls. I didn't say it was a classy establishment. <laughs> I mean, don't assume certain things there, John. Oh, sorry. Uh, did you get hints of glitter? <laughs> At any rate, beyond that, I really got pears, green grapes, tart fruits, you know, et cetera, things of that nature. And granted, I don't think I've ever had it, but I'm sure there's some flavor of Mad Dog 2020 out there that literally just has that whole tart fruit, green colored vibe thing to it, you know? And I think it probably knows, <laughs> maybe the same, who knows. Summing it up, just really lots of fruits and almost like a Caribbean aspect to it, to a degree. A Caribbean snowflake. I don't, I mean, there was just so much fruit that, that came off of it. I mean, yes, that just typical strands profiles there, but beyond that, there's a whole next level of stuff to dive into. Palette wise, dark red wine with heavy spice that was warming at the back. Again, similar to the nose, underlying Stranahan's profile, for lack of a better word, kind of throughout. You know, going towards the back beyond that, it was heavy but thin. I mean, I guess the theme here is almost like Jekyll and Hyde and back and forth for me. Because it, it was a very heavy pour, but it wasn't thick, you know, trying to chew it. It was still thin. I don't, you know, I wrote it down, I looked at it, and I'm like, half this does not make sense. It, it's... 180s over and over and over are, you know, opposites, but well, that's think, what I got so much. I think what you're getting at is it's very complex, so there's a heaviness just to the complexity and everything that's kind of shooting in your mouth at the same time, but it's not, you know, for 94 proof, it's not overwhelmingly heavy on the proof. It's not super thick. It's, there's a lot, but it's not... Uh, it doesn't kind of coat your mouth in the sense of what other ones would and and really just the mouthfeel is is easy. Yeah. It's an easy drinker, but there's a lot of shit going on. Yeah. I mean, like I said, sorry if these notes uh, sound awful to anybody. You can send me a message and I'll try and do it better. But my final part of the palate, um, the chocolate kind of started to show very, very much toward the back end. You really got some of that uh, nice chocolatey feelings and tastings there. Finish wise, I mean, to me, it was like if you blended or were sitting there, you know, drinking red wine, eating fancy dark chocolate bits, this is what you're going to get. You know, if you chew, start chewing on the dark chocolate, throw a little red wine in there. I don't know what type of red wine it would be. I'm not that uh, educated on wines, but I have to believe thoroughly this is, would be the, the combination you would get. And then a little uptick in the malt profile as well. Similar to what you'd get with like, what is it, Nestle Crunches that have like the, the malted Rice crispy things in the middle yeah. of them inside the chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. A bunch you, of crunch. If you had one of those along with red wine and you're chewing that and, and a little bit of red wine in the mouth at the same time for whatever reason, that would be the whole uh, kit and caboodle that you'd have thrown together. Don't worry. Leave it to the fat kid to know <laughs> what the candy was. Hey, you know, I'm, I, I, I like my random uh, candy and food notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like them too. This could be something you mold over for five or ten minutes and try to really dissect it. Or you could just swish it and throw it back and say, huh, ah, some kind of strand of hands, right? But 
either way, I enjoy it. Um, you know, it's kind of funny to me, you know, folks camp out for this overnight. There's a, you know, a huge following for it, but you don't see a ton of them on secondary, but when you do, they don't go that much above what MSRP was. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I don't know if the general consensus in the bourbon community is they're, they're not a big Stranahan's fan. Maybe it goes up on Scotch pages or something that, you know, we don't see, but I mean, that is kind of funny how, you know, it's limit one, only 2,100 bottles, but if you ever see one on the secondary, 250 less. Especially for the fact that they are freezing their ass off to get it. And, mm. and there's only 2,100 bottles. It always surprises me that it doesn't go up for a lot higher. Yeah, I mean, it's December in Denver or wherever in Colorado. Like, you're not warm. No, <laughs> no. And I want Zeke, I know what point he's going to make because he's reaching for something. And it's a point that he doesn't make very often. So I want you all to set your recorders for this and let Zeke do his little spiel right now. John's usually the, uh, the, the packaging horse, so to speak, out of the two of us. But Stranahan's has changed their bottles. I'm, I'm quite enamored by it. If you've ever bought one or seen one, they all come with a, a nice, uh, I guess, is this pewter? I don't know. Some, some type aluminum. of... Aluminum? Yeah, it's not aluminum. It's thicker than that, probably. Who knows? They come with some type of a metal shot glass on the top of them. Previously, they were always just held on by the plastic seal wrap thing. Now they have integrated a corkscrew into both the metal uh, shot glass or cup, whatever you want to call it, as well as the glass on the actual bottle. So this thing screws down over the cork, carry it with you anywhere. You're not going to lose your glass. It's also going to, you don't have to worry about a cork popping out or going somewhere. And even better, it's uh, got one and two ounce increments for measuring. I mean, this is honestly not significant in the grand scheme of the world but to me it's pretty damn impressive and i like what they're doing i guess this is probably my fourth or fifth version of the the stranahan's metal glass i've always kept them all at home i don't know the first one of these i got was on a ski trip years ago with one of my closest friends and in years following when we could go skiing uh, before kids and whatnot stranahan's was always the go-to for whatever the length of the stay was more or less sun up to sun down we were throwing back the strands I mean, just great times, and obviously I have some fun memories here, but I am a Stranahan's fan, admittedly. Well, I would <laughs> I would say that I love, I mean, I've always loved those little metal <laughs> glasses, and you can put two ounces in them. I mean, they're, they're really good for traveling, and that's not reason enough to get a bottle, but I really do appreciate the touch, and I really do like, I mean, I've, I've taken, I can throw these in my little sample pack, and I know that wherever I am, I can get a pretty good pour out of it. <laughs> I, I know that, you know, I have my two-ounce sample glass. Well, yeah, it's not this, glass. You have to break, breaking it. It's well, like, no, but I mean, I'm taking the sample glasses, but I have that little pouch yeah. that they go in. And then I know that wherever I am, if I get a glass, great. But if not, I'm going to have this thing. And it's it's pretty nice. I mean, they've really gone a long way now to put etching on here and then also have the measuring aspect of it which they didn't have previously and the screw top part is is just an added bonus oh no when i got my bottle in i'm looking at it and i'm like holy shit does this thing really screw into the bottle like this is golden i mean Again, it's totally insignificant, so if anybody wants to laugh at me, feel free. Well, and now it's not going to fall <laughs> out when you're traveling around with it. So yeah, no. It's good. But, but Zeke, I appreciate you uh, taking some time and appreciating some marketing. <laughs> Everybody. I'll give credit where it's due, and, and likewise, you, you anyone out there can laugh at me for a, I don't know if it'd be tatering it up on this one. I'm sure it is in some degree, but I, I'll, I'll take what's coming. <laughs> so, final verdict on Stranahan's. What do you think? Man, you have to ask. Um, we we have to officially do it. <laughs> I will say I do think I like the 2017 more. That tequila that was thrown in the mix was just such a curve and so unique. But again, 2,100 of these are put out every year. It's a, I guess not proprietary blend, but it's going to be unique every year. If you enjoy trying different stuff and sharing with your friends, you can't beat something like this. I'll keep buying as long as uh, Nate is, is willing to keep sending, man. <laughs> I am with you. I I really have enjoyed. 
I like the conversation aspect of it, but I also like the fact that they're experimenting out there. They're, they're throwing a bunch of different stuff out there. They could charge $250 for this. I appreciate that they don't, and they leave it at 100 bucks. It's also a four-year product, so that has to be taken into consideration. But there is a lot of work that goes into this. There is a lot of time and effort to blend it correctly. I appreciate that, and I think it's a very solid $100 pour. Hands down. Hands down. So on that note, please go ahead and find us on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Find our Facebook group. Answer a couple questions. Go ahead and join. We'd love to have you. Find us on Twitter at Bourbon Dads. Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Find us on your favorite podcast provider. Leave us a five-star review. Tell us why you like us. Happy birthday again to Ryan Lay. You're a good shit. We love you. And uh, Zeke, where else can the folks find us? Oh, Found a bit. I forgot to toss in there. Anybody who listened past this point gets an I extra know, nugget. At least one person, maybe me. This blends, they do tend to fall apart quickly once cracked. If you have one and you haven't cracked it, when you do, don't delay. If you have cracked yours, you might want to revisit it. And if it is starting to fall off, have a uh, have a big evening. Invite some friends over, share it, love it, enjoy it, and uh, lay it on down to rest. Time to have a party. Cheers. Ciao.